All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about the Microsoft Xbox Showcase, and we're also going to be referring to the PlayStation Showcase as well. I think this would be a good time to have this discussion because both Sony and Microsoft put on their big yearly shows, and it seems clear based off of the general consensus that there is a winner and there is a loser. The winner in this case is apparently Microsoft. And the loser is apparently Sony. Now, obviously, not everybody listening to this is going to agree with that. But I'm just speaking based on the general consensus and what the general population seems to be saying. But when we dive deeper into it and we try to kind of look deeper into it and figure out why exactly are people coming to this conclusion, I think it's fairly simple. One publisher showed a good amount of first party content and first party games and the other simply did not and the first party content that they did show was not necessarily what fans were hoping to see when we look at playstation showcase the big problem as we've talked about but it's worth highlighting here once again is they showed three cgi trailers for live service games which that in and of itself is problematic right like three cgi trailers three live service games but on top of that two of those studios that being firewalk and haven are literally brand new studios that have never produced a game before so we literally have no idea what to expect from their games the other was marathon with bungie and that's a little bit different it's bungie we kind of know what to expect marathon isn't necessarily uh, a brand new game it's not a new ip uh, although it's getting revived. And so the only thing that Sony really had of substance to a lot of people at the PlayStation Showcase was that 10-minute gameplay of Spider-Man 2, which I thought was incredible. And I find it kind of baffling that people have tried so hard to tear Spider-Man 2 down. At least some people have. It's it's very strange. Like, I get it. If Spider-Man's not your cup of tea and you're upset with the showcase, I get it. But I don't know how anybody could watch that gameplay and think it wasn't uh, pretty awesome, but I can at least agree that that simply wasn't enough for Sony. And when you look at Microsoft, the reason why so many people are, I think, very happy and basically saying like, yeah, they had the better showcase and they had the best showcase that they've had in a long time. It is simply because they decided to show up with a fairly large amount of first party games. Now, we could have the conversation. Did they show enough raw gameplay? Was there too many like cinematics or in engine stuff that didn't really give us a good enough idea of what the gameplay is going to be like? Sure, we could have those conversations. But when you consider the struggle that Xbox has had up to this point, I think it's completely understandable why when you look at the new first party games that they announced, and the stuff that showed up at the actual Xbox showcase. And then they ended very strong with that Starfield Direct, which for a lot of people was just like the thing that brought it to the next level because Starfield, in the eyes of a lot of people, is just like a next level game. It's, it's a massive game. It has a lot of hype around it. People are very excited for it. You can begin to understand why Xbox had the better showcase here. Um... I can say that even as somebody who, I won't lie to you guys, like a lot of the games that Microsoft showed off don't necessarily get me super amped and excited. Um, some of them I'm still kind of questioning. Like my biggest issue with Xbox's showcase simply was I wanted Senua's Saga gameplay. I wanted to see that gameplay. And instead we got like another cinematic and it looked great and it definitely got me hyped for the game. But that to me was sorely missing uh, but that's just me personally. Like, I can understand why for many people out there, maybe they want to see that too. But hey, they're excited to see Fable. Hey, they're excited about Compulsion's new game. They're excited about Avowed, stuff like that. So again, the point here and the main reason why Microsoft ultimately had the better showcase is because they had the better first party output and showing, uh, generally speaking. And it's really fascinating because Sony is usually the one that's in this position. And I think that's why people were so caught off guard by the PlayStation Showcase. And some people were just so upset about it because this is what you expect from Sony. You expect Sony to be the one to have possibly the strongest first party output, right? And to have the biggest and best games. And they just have like a barrage. 
And that's not at all what happened. And so, yeah, this to me is kind of where we are right now. And so the next thing in line here, the next discussion, I guess, to be had is at least from the PlayStation side of things, because that's that's mainly what I'm focused on here is, OK, well, number one, we know that Microsoft has been pursuing Activision Blizzard for a while now, and they're continuing to do that. And we know that Sony has not been happy about that and has actually tried to fight that. One thing I will say that has likely worked in Sony's favor because of how good Microsoft Showcase was, and I don't know how many Xbox fans are going to be talking about this, but if you're somebody who's been rooting for the Activision Blizzard uh, deal to go through, you, you might want to pay attention to this. It seems pretty clear to me, and I think to many others based off of this Microsoft showcase, that when Microsoft tried to make the argument to the regulators that they need Activision Blizzard King in order to compete in this industry and in order to compete against Sony and Microsoft, I think after today's Xbox showcase, it's it's been made clear that that argument is just simply false. I think Microsoft actually dismantled their own argument by putting on a showcase like this. And again, this is why I kind of think it, it might work. It might end up working in Sony's favor if this actually has some kind of uh, material impact on whether or not the ABK deal goes through or not. I just wanted to mention that because I do think in the coming months it might possibly become relevant. We'll have to wait and see about that. But the other conversation to be had is simply this. Microsoft has now revealed their hand. And I plan to talk about this uh, much more in depth, uh, probably tomorrow or the day after. But just to kind of like, you know, tease what we're going to talk about a little bit. This is what everybody's been waiting for. We've been waiting for Microsoft to reveal their hand, to show their games, to show what they've been working on. Granted, it's certainly not everything. There's no doubt about that. But at the same time, it was enough that, you know, as I said, it, it really propped Microsoft and Xbox up a lot. And you can tell there's just a completely renewed confidence, a renewed vigor in the brand, in everybody involved in it, in the fan base. And it's just kind of interesting when you look at the PlayStation Showcase, we can pretty much say the exact opposite. And the reason for that is because of the lack of new first party games from the majority of PlayStation Studios. And that is the key thing that I want to highlight here is there has been a ton of speculation like, is Sony holding back? Is Sony going to have another showcase? Now, I'm not here to say that, oh, yeah, Sony is holding back and Sony's going to have another show and they're going to answer, you know, Microsoft showcase here. I have no idea. Sony might not be planning to do anything for the remainder of the year for all I know. But there is one thing I do know, and that is that Sony has not yet revealed their hand. And I know that some people are going to laugh at that and say, oh, well, of course you're going to say that MBG. But no, I mean, really think about it. Think about how many studios PlayStation has underneath them that are working on games that have been working on games and they simply haven't revealed them yet. And this is the thing that's really kind of standing out in my mind when I'm reflecting on both the PlayStation Showcase and the Xbox Showcase. And I'm just looking at the difference in reactions and in the conversations and just the overall feelings that people are left with. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of extreme reactions on, you know, both ends where people are going to make it sound like uh, what just happened between the Xbox and PlayStation Showcase is... Uh, completely make or break and and we're going to see just a complete reversal in, in every area and it just simply doesn't work like that but there's no doubt that what we just had happen could be the beginning of something no doubt about that what that something is remains to be seen and I don't think there's really any point in speculating about it right here right now but that's what's funny about this whole conversation is it's just you know, Sony had their showcase and they didn't reveal their hand. They showed three live service games, two of which were from new studios that they just acquired. And, you know, the other two were, or three of them were from new studios, I should say, if we count Bungie since they bought them. And then the others, Insomniac with Spider-Man 2, which we've known about since 2021. It's going to be very 
very interesting to watch and see what Sony ends up doing because while I can say that Microsoft did reveal their hand, they didn't reveal everything, and why would they? There would be no reason for them to, um, but they revealed a good amount. Sony simply did not. Sony did not show their hand. They did not reveal a good amount, and that seems to be the singular problem here and the singular differentiating factor between these two, and this right now is why all the conversation is focused in a positive way on Xbox, and right now there's a lot of, frankly, not so great conversation around PlayStation and you know, you just have to wonder, like, when is Sony going to reveal their hand? Um, and what is that going to look like? And what impact will that have? So, yeah, nonetheless, I will say on a uh, more positive note for Xbox here, I'm very happy to see that they had a good showcase because what this is ultimately going to mean is more competition for PlayStation. As I said, I think Microsoft unfortunately deconstructed their own argument in real time. But in doing so, I think it's ultimately good for everybody. Xbox fans are happy. People are feeling up about what they've shown. And now PlayStation seemingly is going to have some relatively serious competition. And as a PlayStation fan and as somebody who plays on PlayStation, like that's what I like to see. Sony, I hope you're watching. I hope you're paying attention. And I, I hope you're kind of like sitting back and you know, waiting for the right moment to um, reveal your hand. And hopefully that's what ends up happening because the more competition Sony brings, the more competition Microsoft brings. I think that's uh, something that's really been highlighted recently. And, and yeah, overall, after watching the Xbox showcase, I can safely say they had a very good showcase. I think that it was a long time coming and something that was absolutely needed at this time. And I'm going to be patiently waiting to kind of see, you know, what Sony may end up doing next as a potential response. Are they going to respond? Do they feel the need to respond? It's hard to say, but like I said, Sony is currently sitting on quite a bit and um, you do just have to wonder, like, what are they planning on doing with that? So we'll have to uh, wait and see what happens, but what I can say right now uh, definitively for the remainder of this year is that no matter where you're playing, no matter what you're playing on, it's looking pretty good, right? Like even if you just have one console or the other, it's looking pretty good. If you have all things and you can play on all things, then yeah, a lot of great games coming. So at this point, leave your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll be interested to see what you have to say. Leave the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.